in this video we are going black and white and if you stick around to the end you will get the best tutorial offer of the year in today's video i am out to do some high contrast black and white photography and i'm the first to admit that i'm not doing a whole lot of black and white landscape photography and ironically the main reason for that is that doing black and white photography you leave too much of reality behind now i have no problem whatsoever with composite photography with highly edited photos and so forth but for the most part i prefer to do have my photos grounded in reality and black and white photos have a tendency to move too far away from that. I enjoy colors, I like colors, I see colors. Maybe it has something a little bit to do with my uh, color blindness. But nevertheless, today I want to give it a go because I have a vision in mind. And I do think that when you do set out to do black and white photography, it is important to have an idea about what it is you want you can probably when you're out in the field with some experience see okay this photo will do great in black and white or this photo will do great in black and white however in my experience it is a good idea to have some kind of pre-visualized idea about what it is you want so that is why i have come out here to a couple of my favorite trees i have visited them before here on my channel and as you can see, it is a beautiful day. We have some sun, we have some not really clear sky, 50% clouds in the skies, 30% clouds-ish, but that is very much on purpose. Clear blue skies and then with some puffy clouds, because then we have some interest in the skies. And the main thing about doing this kind of photography in high contrast light is because we are doing high contrast black and white photography and when i'm talking about having something pre-visualized having a plan the entire idea about how i want to edit this photo is to darken the blues in the photo so i want to darken the blue sky as to have the clouds really pop when I'm also using the trees in the foreground, it is very much still my subject. That is what I'm photographing in this scene. It is the trees. But the trees have to also stand out. And as you can see on my footage here, the trees are dark on this background as the background is right now. So if I have a blue background on the trees and I darken down the blues, then I will have dark trees on a dark background. And that is where the clouds come into the picture. Literally. <laughs> clouds come from over here and move into the picture. And using those clouds, I want to take the photo when the clouds are behind the tree and I hopefully have a fairly clear sky above. In that way, according to my plan and according to how I pre-visualized the photo, I will have a dark top in the photo and then I will have a brighter middle part of the photo where the trees are beautifully silhouetted against some puffy white clouds. And then I have the bottom down here, which I will most likely have in some kind of mid grayish tone the greens down here. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with them, if I'm going to darken the greens down too, but I am definitely going to darken down the blues. So that's my plan for this photo. Right now I have a little bit too many clouds in the sky, so I'm basically just time-lapsing this. I can put it up here so you can see the photos I'm getting. I'm not sure how many I will actually get, so there is a proper time-lapse. Uh, but you can see what it is I have in mind. And hopefully at some point there will be 
enough clear space above the trees so that I can get the photo that I've pre-visualized. So the main reason why I specifically came to this location is that one of the things that I really think defines a great black and white photo is that because you remove the color, you are already down the path to minimalism, to something minimal, to something simple. And I want to photograph a simple scene. If you have too much clutter in a black and white photo, it is hard to distinguish what is what without colors. Like imagine a forest scene that you turn black and white. It is so hard to distinguish the different trees and plants from each other because it's just a lot of texture and a lot of mess. So it is very, very important, again, in my opinion, that you have a simple subject, a very minimal scene where there's no doubt about what you're supposed to look at. You can have several subjects, but it is important not to have too much clutter around. And that is why I've come to this super simple scene two trees are grown together, standing on a field, and I have basically only the background uh, clouds. Now, since I do know that I am going to turn this photo into black and white, and I already know that the blues are going to be very deep black, so I have the high contrast between the clouds and the sky, then I can actually help my editing by darkening the sky even more while I'm out in the field photographing. So that is why I put on the polarizing filter. So right now I have the sun up here and about 90 degrees to the sun I have the trees ish. 90 degrees are over here so 80 ish degrees. And that means that when I put on the polarizing filter then I darken down the background sky even more than what was already there. So you can see here on the back of my camera, you can see how the sky appears darker than on this camera here, ish. I'm not entirely sure if you could actually see it, but that is how it looks. Now in regard to the settings, when I do use a polarizing filter, I prefer to photograph in manual mode because then when I turn the polarizing filter it's easier to see whether the polarizing effect is on or off because it darkens down the photo. If I'm in aperture priority then uh, the shutter speed changes as you darken down the photo and then it can be a little bit hard to see whether uh, the effect is there. So that gives me uh, some settings which is ISO 100 and I'm shooting at f8 because it's far away, I only need the trees to be really in focus. And then of course the background, and this is more than sufficient, I'm photographing at 105-ish millimeter. So everything should be fine at f8. And that gives me shutter speed on a beautiful day like this with lots of sun of 1 one sixtieth of a second. I am shooting in interval mode as for me to get a little bit of a time lapse. And that's about it. The only one thing I'm really crossing my fingers for <laughs> in regard to the composition is that I actually do have some light on the foreground. I think that will look the best. So down on the grass, as you can see right now, it is a little bit in shadow because there's a cloud in front of the sun. I do want the grass just a little bit like this here right now to have a little bit yeah this is actually perfect so some of the grass is lit up maybe also the trees I don't know and then you have a fairly defined background where you have clouds behind the tree and a clear sky so that's about it I will stand here collect a few more photos and hopefully I will get something which is down the alley that I'm looking for. So here is the straight out of camera photo and as per always raw photos aren't particularly interesting but just see what you can do with editing. Isn't that a beauty? The photo came out exactly as I wanted it to. And here comes the best tutorial offer of the year and it 
only last for the next five days. So if you see this after the 20th of October 2021, you are sadly a little too late. In my brand new two hours plus tutorial on mastering black and white landscape photography, which I release exclusively with this year's five day deal, I edit this photo along with five others. In this new tutorial, I want to aim you with a selection of tools you can use in your black and white landscape photography. I talk about both the philosophy of black and white photography, composition, the use of light, the perception and interpretation of a black and white converted photo and how to use different editing tools to make your vision come alive. I mainly use Adobe Photoshop's RAW Converter Camera RAW, which has the same editing algorithms and almost the same interface as Adobe Lightroom. And then I finish the photos off in Adobe Photoshop. However, if you prefer to stay in Lightroom or Camera Raw, that is completely possible too. To any newcomers, the 5 day deal is the single best offer on the market for you to acquire a ton of high quality educational photography material from some of the leaders of the industry. Material from Scott Kelby, F Stoppers, Sash Remeli, Tim Shields, Peter Hurley, Greg Benz, Brian Peterson, Jimmy McIntyre, Ryan Dyer, his high lord Gavin Hartcastle, and my two friends and colleagues Nick Page and Nigel Danson, and many, 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 many more. There is actually a total amount of 21 products or tutorial collections in the main 5 day deal photography bundle which normally has a collective price of 2232 US dollars. But you can actually get it for the obscenely low price of only 89 US dollars. I participate again this year because I truly believe this is the offer of the year for anyone interested in learning about photography. There is just nothing like it and 10% of the profit goes directly to a good cause. If the main bundle is not enough, you can even get two more bundles with even more material and if you get all three bundles, you unlock additional bonus material, which means you get 5011 US dollars worth of educational material for the ridiculous low price of only 157 US dollars. However, you completely don't need to get those extras if you just want my tutorial. It is the main bundle you should go for. As I mentioned, the tutorial is released exclusively with the 5 day deal, which means it won't be available afterwards and it'll only be available for the next 5 days starting from now. So be sure to hit the link in the description of this video to claim this ridiculously cheap offer because it is gone in only 5 days. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.